Hello everyone. So in this video, let us talk about packages in Golang. So I have a wonderful article that actually explains packages in a very clean way. There's a medium, medium article. I will link down this particular article in the description of this video. You can go check it out and it explains packages in a very great way. But to just summarize what packages are, you can assume and take in one scenario, which is also written on here that let's say that you have thousands of functions that you want to use and that are repetitively used inside your whole project. Okay. You want to, maybe you want to convert a string to uppercase. You want to use a lowercase function that will just convert the whole string into lowercase or maybe different functions related to string. So what you'll do is that you will make a go file in which all of these methods you will implement because it only takes a string as an input and provide convert all of that into a respondingly lowercase string. So you will make methods different related to strings and then put it, let's say in case dot go, that will change the case. Maybe trim dot go will trim the string. Mi miscellaneous dot go will have miscellaneous uh, implementation related to strings. And all of those particular files, go files, come under a string directory. Okay. Similarly, you have different methods or maybe different information regarding numbers. So you have different arithmetic operations or maybe you want to check that whether the number is prime or not. So for that, you have another directory that is storing all of those methods. And when you have all of these different methods and under different directory, you will club them inside a bigger directory that you call as a package. Okay. This package encapsulates all of these methods related to a particular field, you can say, and that actually can be used when we are trying to do some operation, which so that we don't have to reuse these methods or reuse these functionalities again in the code. You can directly import them out from different package. That's the overall idea of what packages is. And you can go over this whole article. Thanks for him to write down such a descriptive article and you can go over that. Moving forward to our particular code part, how we can learn from that. So packages is made up of different go, like you can say different go files. And what are the different purposes of packages is that you can organize your code. You can reuse the code. It prevents name conflict so that you don't use the same name again and again for different functions. If you require this also, it speed up the compiler by allowing recompilation of smaller chunks of a program so that you are only like recompiling a smaller chunks. You don't have to recompile the whole package because you already know that it is importing that is correct. Okay. So that's the world uh, benefit. Let us use. So we have already seen in the previous video, in printing out the hello world that there's an FMT package. So how you can import a package import and then you can import the package name. Let's say FMT. Now this is squiggly line, squiggly red line, which means that if you have imported any package, you have to definitely use it inside this uh, like main function or else uh, it will not compile. It will give an error. So let's just print out the same thing. FMT dot print So this is a method provided by the FMT package. So let us go inside that as well. So let us just print out hello world here. And what you can see is that if you just want to go inside this package, where is this package actually originated? You just go inside this and what you can actually see is, okay, inside the source file, we have these packages and there's a FMT package. What you can see that this is a particular directory that has different go files inside it that has all of these implementation, all of these functions. So maybe if you want to go find out where is this print line function in the FMT package. So if you want to just click on this, you just see that it is inside this print.go file. So print.go file has this print line function, which internally again called f print line function. Okay, so if you want to just again go inside this function, this is again inside this print.go file that internally use new printer or write function to write it on the terminal. And you can directly go inside more how these functions are working, but you don't actually need out so much implementation. But the overall idea is that you have imported the particular package that consists of these functions that is used for different purposes. Okay. So if you just close it out now, we have used that whenever we like import this function or like this package, whatever is the package name dot the method you are using from that package is the actual syntax that we will use. It is used to print out hello world. The different packages as well. Let's say you use the math package. Okay. So if I just use that math dot max. Okay. So you can see that diff different methods that I can use in maths, let's say maths, main, absolute, you want to use a pi value that is so long, then uh, the a cos, a cos h and all of that, there are different methods provided by the math package as well. So let's say I want to find out the max of two numbers. So it will take two float 64 numbers. Let's say 12.34 comma 
and then we have to print it out as well so that we can see what's the exact output for that so fmt dot print line and what you can also observe is that when i use any like package math package so i have to also import it out so you can like import this inside the same import like import put the same uh, you can say that uh, functions like uh, packages and that will import it out so let's uh, find out the answer for this if you just go run this particular file, you will just see hello world and the max of both of these numbers that is 34.5. Working fine. So apart from that, all of this, you can also import third party packages. Okay. So what are third party packages used for? Let's say that you have a use cases in which you want to generate a random ID that is unique. Okay. But it should be random ID such that a unique ID you can, or you can say that that is associated with the user or what I'm more uh, about to say is let's say that a user comes to your website and you want to create a unique ID for the user so that you can map that particular ID to a user so that you have to create a database entry for that. Okay. Or maybe you have a different timestamp for maybe you have a, uh, maybe a functionality or a service in which you provide, uh, you can say, uh, ID for tracking out packages. So you have to gen like create an ID. You have different IDs. You have used different packaging services. So you create an ID that is used by the user that is used for tracking that particular package. So you have to generate different random IDs. Okay. Or unique IDs by means. So you cannot just, just put IDs like one, two, three, four, because these are distributed systems. One ID is generated somewhere else. One ID is generated somewhere else. So these should be unique, but also should not be co like colliding out. Okay. So you can also not make it like just a uh, sequential also. So you can use different packages. Uh, there are different packages online, but you can Google it out like unique ID generator for Golang and you can find a different packages. Let us use one of the packages right here. Let's say if I just print out this package. Now what you can observe is that this package is not internally provided by Golang. That is, that is by the third party package. So you have to like first import this package out. Okay, so what you can do is that you can just go to terminal, go get this particular package name. So this is a go like GitHub repository that provides us random uh, like unique IDs. Okay, let us download this out. So it is downloading. Okay, download it out. So now from red, it will I think so most probably be done to green. Yeah. So what you can directly observe is that from red, it is now going to green, which means that we have imp properly imported this out, but we have not used it out. That is why it is giving us a red squiggly line. So unused import. Okay. So uh, what we'll do is that we have to first generate an ID using this. So whatever package we used, like import, we have to use that particular package name dot the methods provided by that particular package. So let's say the package name is this XID. So XID, uh, XID dot new. This XID dot new will generate a new ID. Let us store this ID somewhere. Or maybe that we can actually print it out as well. So print fm dot print ln this particular ID. Okay. Let us just see this out. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, this should not. Let's just. Okay. So what you can directly observe is that it generates a unique ID for you. Now, if you just uh, let's say if I just run this program again, it will generate one more unique ID. So this is different. That's why, and you will not find this again. If you like run somewhere else, this program as well, generate this ID, it will be always unique IDs. Okay. So you can just give this to maybe user or maybe as a tracking ID so that you have a unique ID associated for a particular package. Okay. Not like package means that you are like a, a packaging service, uh, service in which you are delivered different packages to different users. So, uh, yeah, you can use this ID. So that is the, let the multiple pro, provide like different packages in which you can use this out. Uh, why this is okay, not sorted. You can sort them out. No, not much important. But yeah, what you can directly observe is that this is for running perfectly fine. And these are how you can use packages internally or externally third packages as well from or in Golang. So thank you for watching this video till the end. Let us, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.